What's happening everybody and welcome back to TGF Stream, this is your boy Disco. This is just a section that I love to talk about and this is my anime section in my channel. So, the first review I thought I'd do would be the first season of Dragon Ball Super. Or we'll call it the Beerus Saga, or the Battle of the Gods Saga, but everybody, anybody calls it, you know what I'm talking about. So, Dragon Ball Super. It's set place just after the Majin Buu Saga, so I'm kind of glad that they had ended up cutting out GT altogether. And they were going back to the roots just after Dragon Ball Z, which was the best. To me, it was still probably either one of the best animes, cartoons, whatever you want to call it. I couldn't wait to get into school, get on Cartoon Network and just watch it. The only times that I would totally be killing myself is between the sagas, because they never told you when the next saga was going to come on. So you ended up just waiting and waiting. And I think the worst one was between Imperfect Cell and Cell. That wait was just was too much, because you just couldn't wait to see how that was going to go down. So, Boo gets defeated, and the god of destruction gets woken up. He wakes up early, he wakes up, Beerus wakes up 39 years after he goes to sleep, and the reason being is because there was, a, there was a prophecy. That prophecy said that there was going to be a Super Saiyan god, someone strong enough to oppose Beerus, or at least stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. So that sparked his interest, so he went to go find this Super Saiyan god. That leads Beerus to King Kai's planet, where Beerus has a, a companion with him. He has. We end up knowing that his name's Weez, and at the time we don't know how strong Weez was, because when he goes to King Kai's planet, Goku's no, not able to register either of their keys, and then we find out that Goku's just not able to register deities at all. They have their completely different spectrum of key, I suppose. So he's on King Kai's planet, and between them, in my eyes, or when I was watching it, I just felt like Beerus was just a, a bit of a bigger dick than he is in the movie. Just because he's, in his introduction in the movie, he wakes up due to the hourglasses exploding, and you see him crawling, and you see him falling, and you see him just generally getting up as a cat would that's been in slumber for 39 years. Where in the series, he's already awake, him and Weezer are at this buffet table on another planet where they're trying to show them all the delicacies, or what they call delicacies of their planet, and Beerus doesn't really like it that much, so he just fucks them up and destroys half their planet. Where I didn't think that was as, as good as introduction to him, where I thought it was much more light-hearted, the way that he had done it in the movie. So, this leads him to King Kai's planet. And then again, he shows how much he is a dick, because he threatens King Kai. You find out that Beerus is the reason that King Kai's planet's tiny in the first place, and he threatens him over some biscuits and that he's going to destroy it again. So he sends his Goku and he tells Goku to come up because he wants to talk to him and he asks Goku different questions about regarding the Super Saiyan God, does he know who he is or where he is. So Goku doesn't know any of that because no one's heard about the Super Saiyan God. So Whis tells him that there's also Vegeta. So Vegeta's back on Earth. So before Whis and Beerus depart and go back to Earth to question Vegeta, Goku asks Beerus for a sparring match. And during that match, in the film it was a lot more condensed and I did prefer the series when it came to this fight because Goku was, you could see Goku getting excited that there was someone as strong as Beerus just in general living in this universe. So he goes Super Saiyan 3, he shows his full power and that inclines Beerus to start a fight with him. In the show, I do like it that Beerus just pings him straight across King Kai's planet and then whap whaps him straight in the fucking neck fucks Goku right up. In the show, he goes much, the fight's much more intense, you actually see some fists going and, but Goku still gets a chop and he ends up fucked up. So, Beerus and Whis depart, they go back to planet Earth to question Vegeta. During the time it's Bulma's birthday and she gets a little bit annoyed, maybe because she's been drinking, she gets annoyed and Beerus ends up slapping her. And for me, this is probably the best bit about either the movie or the show in the movie, I just think the way that he does it is just much more, it's just much better. It's just the way he's like, my Bulma! And you just see him just fucking going straight into Beeru, super full Super Saiyan, get some punches in. But then in the end, you know, Vegeta doesn't he, doesn't he hold out against Beerus because Beerus is just so strong. During that time, Goku's already landed. You don't find out that Goku already has already been there with instant transmission. So Goku turns up and they, they still don't know anything about the Super Saiyan God. So they use the Dragon Balls because they've got them there for Bulma's party. It's one of the, the bingo wishes, that the, the bingo prizes that they've got. 
so they end up making a wish to Shenron. So Shenron co ends up coming up and describing on how to become the Super Saiyan God. So you need five Super Saiyans, not including the Super Saiyan that's already there. So and fundamentally you need six. So they end up introducing Pan. So the six would be Trunks, Goten, Vegeta, Goku, Pan and Gohan. So the six of them are standing there and Goku ascends to Super Saiyan God mode. And, and what, oh, this is one of the things I just I hated. When I'd seen images and pictures and when I read magazines and even I ordered this bloody Japanese magazine, didn't even speak a word of Japanese, just to see pictures of what the movie's going to be like. And when I'd seen Super Saiyan God, to my mind I was just, I was kind of unhappy with it. Because it, it's Super Saiyan God, it'd be better if they had just called it Saiyan God, because he's not in Super Saiyan mode. And anyway, and I just, to me myself personally, it just looked like he was under KO Ken, and I, I just wanted some form of Super Saiyan mode. Realistically, what I was really hoping for was because they had been cutting out GT, and I knew they weren't going to be using the Super Saiyan God mode apart for this movie, because I knew once some of the story about once this had been done and how else they were going to do it, I just preferred it if they had went either Super Saiyan Four, standard Super Saiyan Four. Or if potentially a Super Saiyan 4 gold mode. So, once that had been done, I kind of had to make terms with it. Because he could kind of looked cool and the fight was was good. The fight was really good between Goku and Beerus. I just didn't like that he looked like he was under KO Ken. That was just one thing I was really disappointed with. And maybe if they had changed, I would have preferred it if they had went. Just as a little ink on the, a nod to GT, I would have preferred him being Super Saiyan 4. Just for that fight. Because ever since then, he's probably not going to go back to it. Because during the fight, Goku hates, he hates that he needed to use five other Saiyans to achieve the power that he's got. And you can see that through the movie. In the show, I didn't see that as much. Goku was still trying to come to terms with how much power he had. You see him flying over Beerus and no control in his punches. He does get more and more into it and Beerus gives him his time to get used to that new power. Just in the, the film, I preferred the way that the fight was. But... Goku still holds his own, you know, in the movie. Goku manages to get him to 70% of his power. And to me that was realistic, you know, 70% of his power, there's still 30% there for Goku and Vegeta to train, plenty of seasons, plenty of time for them to achieve as much power as he's got. Where in the show, I felt like Beerus was pretty much using 100% of his power during those fights, you know, you, you could see all his energy, the punches, they were cracking open the universe. It just seemed like Goku was pushing him to almost his absolute limits, and that I wasn't as happy with. Just on the main reason that you, I, I preferred there to be such a bigger gap. If Goku was that was him, is matched up to Beerus, then you know that's that's it. You know Beerus has just became a normal fighter. Then I would preferred him being because he's a god, and this is the very first season, and you know it was the first movie. I would have still preferred there to be much more of a gap between their power. Even being Super Saiyan God, where Beerus is, you know, an actual god. I would have preferred there to be such a much, much bigger fight difference at the end. And, you know, that's just something else, and that's my own, opi and that's my own opinion. Where, I did like the fight though, guys. You need to, you need to like, see when Goku's shouting in Beerus' ear, the Beerus is pulling Goku's nose, you know, there was a lot of jokes, and I like that, I like that too, because it shows you the camaraderie that Goku and Beerus is going to end up having. Another point in, in the show that I did like, and the movie, is I like that Goku didn't even notice that he goes back to Super Saiyan. He ends up going back to Super Saiyan and he doesn't even notice because it must be cells or something in his body had achieved this new level. Goku was able to maintain that level, even not being Super Saiyan God. That had ran out, Beerus, didn't even, Beerus was trying to tell him he didn't even notice that he was back to being normal Super Saiyan, but Goku kept fighting on to his very last breath. And then he ends up just, that's it. He just has no more power, he just falls from the atmosphere. In the movie, that's one of, these are the other differences I didn't like. In the movie, when he fell, Beerus catches him and brings him back, so it shows you that he was a willing fighter. Where in the series, he just lets him fall, and it's Vegeta that ends up catching him. Kicks, uh, kicks somebody out of the way, I can't believe it's Koten or Trunks. He kicks him out of the way and he catches Goku. So, Beerus still wasn't able to get beat, so he's going to destroy the planet. He ends up in the show. In the show, I did. 
I did like it that he shot a bit of the planet. He's like, well, this is as much as I'd never said how much it was going to destroy. Where in the show, uh, he was still going to destroy it, but then he ends up passing out because he's that he's that tired and uh, we're saved by him uh, being exhausted. And I quite like that scene where he's just there snoozing away and Weez is like, right, I'll just take him back. In the end, I would have preferred it to have kind of missed this out. Because I had three years of watching this movie, every other Dragon Ball Z fan should have really seen this film as well. I would have preferred it to have taken out a, actually starting off from the training that they end up going to. After this episode, like the conclusion of God, Battle of Gods, Vegeta and Goku end up training with Whis. And that, that training, I would have preferred them to have started from that, just because we had plenty of time between this season starting and then from the movie, you know, Beerus goes to sleep for a few years, so that gives it a perfect timing, but then when he wakes up, Goku and Vegeta were already training. But that's one for a different discussion video, guys, and I'm I'm glad that you've spent time listening to me rambling on for about 12 minutes. Um, but if you have any other Dragon Ball Z discussions, or if you want to leave me a message on your feelings on towards the super in the movie, I didn't mind that at all. I'll try and get all your questions answered as best I can. You guys have a good day. Peace out.